Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about antenna arrays. So why do we go for antenna arrays and then where do we use them? Antenna arrays are used in order to enhance the performance, to have a high gain, high directivity and narrow half a beam width. And we use them in many applications like satellite and radar communications. Basically, isotropic antennas radiate electromagnetic signals equally in all directions but if we want the signal to be sent in one single direction then we need to design the antenna accordingly in satellites we need a point-to-point -point communications so a high signal strength is needed in satellites for a long distance transmission and reception of signals and that's the reason we go for antenna arrays for example a satellite orbiting around the Earth wants to send a signal to the ground station antenna located at some point on Earth. Then it is required to have the antenna array installed on the satellites with a high gain so that the signal from antenna on the satellite is pointed in one single direction. Generally speaking, antenna arrays acts like a laser light pointing to one single direction with a high gain. Now if you look into this design on the screen, this is a 4x4 antenna array designed at 3 GHz. It is designed on a FR4 substrate material that has a thickness of 3.2 mm. So before going into this, let's have a look at a single patch antenna. So this is a single patch antenna that is designed at 3 GHz as well. If we look into the S parameters of this antenna, as you can see, it is exactly resonating at 3 GHz between the frequencies 2.94 and 3.04 GHz. It has got a reflection coefficient around minus 30 dB. Now, if you look into the gain plot, so this is a radiation pattern of a single patch antenna. So as you can see here, the peak gain of this antenna is 4.6 dB. And then it has got a half power beam width of approximately 85 degrees. So how do you find the half power beam width? So it's actually high peak gain minus 3 dB gives you the half power beam width. Now the gain here is 4.6. 4.6 minus 3, it's half power, is minus 3 dB, is 1.60. So at 1.6 line, you can calculate the half power beam width. Like if you look into this red line, it has got a 36 minus 36.52, and then this side you have you got a 49.97. So you add up these two, it gives a half power beam width. So this red line is a radiation pattern at phi is equals to zero degrees and then this green i'm sorry this black line is a radiation pattern at phi is equals to 90 degrees now if you look into this array antenna so the single patch element is duplicated to 15 elements so to have a 16 elements in total so what are the things do we have to consider while designing antenna arrays so number one is the distance between the elements the distance the spacing between each of these patch elements and number two is the feed network so what distance should we choose between the patch elements it is good if the distance between the elements is less than lambda by two so why this spacing is so important so as you increase the spacing between the elements we get a high gain but at the same time we get the side lobes so side lobes are not good uh, for an antenna in the sense like if you have a side lobes in the sense we are sending our signal in unwanted directions whereas we want the signal to be sent in one single direction so as the spacing increases gain increases but at the same time side lobes increases so the spacing should be chosen in such a way that it gives a good gain but at the same time the side lobe should be suppressed. So number two is the feeding network. The feeding network plays an important role here as well. So your feeding network should be designed in such a way that the feed network 
is exactly impedance matched to the all the patch elements and then we need to make sure that this feed network is in in a symmetric manner so when you design the feed network we need to make sure that each patch element is receiving the signal at the same time now if we look into the s parameters of this antenna so this antenna is resonating from 2.9 gigahertz to 2.92 gigahertz to 3.29 gigahertz but whereas if you look into the single patch antenna it has a narrow bandwidth but whereas our antenna has a high bandwidth what is the reason the feed network is reason so you as i said when you design a feed network so properly with a good impedance matching then it will lead to bandwidth enhancement as well and that's the reason it has a a wide bandwidth it has got almost 600 to 700 megahertz bandwidth and then if you look into the gain this has a gain of 13 dpi so single element has a gain of 4 4.6 db but 4 by 4 array antenna has a 13 db gain it has got a half power beam width of around uh, approximately 16 degrees half power beam width and if you look this is a 3d polar 3d gain plot as you can see the red color is the radiation pattern i mean the gain so as you can see it is pointing in one single direction and then you don't and then you have a side lobe level starting from around 0 db yes so your side lobes are starting somewhere on 1.84 db which is good so your so the distance that i have choose to between the elements is 15 mm you can choose higher spacing but we need to make sure that you don't have a high side lobe levels so how do you make a choice of the number of elements on a patch i mean how do you choose how many how do you choose that number of elements that you wanted to have now if you look into the single patch as you can as i said it has got a 4.6 db but i was aiming for a 15 db gain so there is a setup in, a, in HFSS that you can choose how many elements you wanted to have before you start designing antenna array. So if you go into the radiation option here and then when you right click, there is an option called antenna array setup. Go to the regular array setup, regular array. And as you can see here, it will ask for what is the distance between the cells. Oh, sorry previously i mentioned it was a 15 mm so sorry it is a 50 mm distance between the elements i have chosen so what is the distance between the elements so i have chosen 50 mm and then 50 mm so how many elements do you need in x direction i need four elements in x direction and then four elements in y direction which is a four by four array and if you click on ok so when you go for a four by four elements the antenna will give a gain of 16.65 approximately 16 dbi at 3 gigahertz so i was aiming for 15 db but when i design a 4x4 i actually should get a 16 db gain but whereas i've just got 13.1 dbi so what is your reason you know for this gain loss so there's almost a loss of 3 db so your feed network your feed network is giving you a loss of 3 dB and that's the reason I've told you that your feed network should be designed so properly that you don't have any losses but you can't have a feed network that gives a low loss I mean when you design a feed network which is it's, it has got a lots of transmission lines as you can see so as you increase the number of li lines transmission lines you definitely get a loss at least minimum 2 dB of loss so you can't avoid these losses but you can minimize the losses you can't permanently you not know, get rid of these losses so feed network plays an important role and as i said your feed should be so symmetric if, if if your feed network is unsymmetric then you get unsymmetrical patterns if you look into the patterns here the patterns at phi is equals to zero and phi is equals to 90 degrees are symmetrical so because you have a, all the patches are receiving the signal at the same time 
and then if you if, if the feed is asymm asymmetric then you get uh, asymmetrical patterns so these two things are more important number one is the spacing between the elements and number two is the feed network so when you design the antenna perfectly or antenna array perfectly then the signal that is radiating from each element I mean all the 16 elements add up together to give a high gain and these are the things that you need to consider before designing an antenna array thank you so much